Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. That's right, and not just any epic. It is epic number 100 on the channel. And to mark such an auspicious moment, I thought it was best represented on the infamous map, Setton's Clutch. I know the last epic we did was also a Setton's game, but really it belongs nowhere else as far as I'm concerned. And a quick glance at the scoreboard will also tell the more adept of you out there in the SOPCOM kind of realm that uh, we are dealing with some tip-top pro-level action here. Lowest rated player at 1,800, top rated player at 2,500. So nothing but the best here for you guys today. We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top and this Team 2 down here at the bottom as our players gate into the field. There they go, going rearguard air position for Team 1 to begin with. We've got Terrarii, clearly a fan of Rome Total War. Were they the... The infantry lineman who used to toss the pillums, the spears up front. I think so. Anyway, he's going UEF for a bit of a change today and going fabulous vivacious violet opening first land. Over at the cliffs for team one down here, another UEF player, this time going double air to get that side island. It's protect and he is going Ferrari red today. On the causeway for team one in elephantine grey, we have Nori, our first seraphim of the day opening first land and at the beaches to close things out for team one going Aeon it's Esperanto and he's rocking regal purple today going first land and spinning off a couple of land scouts first things first as well that's an interesting decision none of this messing about with scout planes he's going old school with some floaty floaty naughty naughty and would you just look at the waypoints he set up for those two they're probably going to get gunned down as soon as they make landfall, but uh, it's his decision. Uh, he knows better than me, judging by his uh, whopping 2300 rating. Let's check out Team 2 now down here at the bottom left. Rearguard air position. It's Lord Asmodeus. There he is, handling air, opening first land, going Seraphim in lurid green. Over at the cliffs for Team 2 in Spetsnats green, we have Jagged Appliance, our first Cybran of the day, opening first land. On the causeway for Team 2, just leaving his base as he struts his stuff towards the middle. Now, I know I'm going to butcher this. I think it might be Polish. Um, I think it might be Zvijak, um, but uh, I'm not sure. And I'm just going to do the classic British thing of butchering other people's names and words with my own accent and call it Zvijak. I just think it's best for everybody to pretend that... Uh, um, I know what I'm talking about while simultaneously ignoring cultural norms. Uh, <laughs> he's going Seraphim, opening a double first land and going a third air down here by the Hydro by the looks of things. And what is he going? He is going Dijon Yellow, I believe. Almost said Fecal Brown, but it's not. And last but not least, down here, our second Cyber of the Day, this time in Burgundy Red. It's a Foley. He's left the main base, going up towards the center of the map to assist his teammate Swizak on the causeway by the looks of things. And he opened first land, second air. So there we have it. Racial disparities between the team. We've got two UEF, a uh, I almost said Cybrin, a Seraphim and an Aeon there on Team 1. And then two Cybrin, a Seraphim. Oh, sorry, two Cybrin and two Seraphim there on Team 2. All of the mistakes today. That's good. We're not three minutes in. We're bungling our words already. Uh, game quality at 94%. And this is a custom match as well. So no AI has been putting these players together for maximum game balance. They have done this all by themselves. We're pretty happy with 94%. Top rated player, as we've already said, is Foley, 2500. Scary SOB is as far as I'm concerned, moving up towards the middle of the map in Burgundy Red there. And lowest rated player on the same team, the person he'll be assisting on the causeway, Swizak handling causeway, offense, defense, however you want to look at it, for Team 2. And then a slightly narrower band of ratings on Team 1. So it'll be interesting to see if Foley gets primaried and knocked out. Always the best way to do things as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Speaking of getting knocked out, those spirits took a little bit of fire i'm not sure exactly where or by what but uh, only one of them remains and he is partially damaged so uh bless him did it actually give them any intel whatsoever our survey says they've discovered a mex so but then cheap dime a dozen hardly uh any great loss as far as I'm concerned, or indeed as far as Esperanto is concerned. Early transports made their landing successful at the side islands. Both 
protect and jagged appliance grabbing hold of those but check this out transport still on the move at the top of the screen for jagged he kept one engineer on board and is now moving up to the cliffs esperanto is hip to his business however and does have an interceptor and air scout on patrol in this area trouble is that's actually quite a lot of real estate to navigate with your inties and try and kill off an inbound transport especially one that's hugging the top of the screen as closely as Jagged is here although that Inti passes right overhead he'll have got a look at it but he won't be able to shoot it down in time assuming Jagged is able to offload and indeed he does engineer on the ground however the element of surprise is gone and he's not going to go straight for a T1 point defense or a land factory no he's just going to steal some mass anyway what we should have been looking into was the Escalating situation in the center of the map over here on the causeway. Four commanders, two from each team, getting down and into it. Nori and Swizak and Foley all have taken significant damage. The most damage, though, for the moment seems to be Nori. He's on around 6,700. Esperanto looking pretty healthy as far as we're concerned. Still well in the green on about 9,500. Swizak now getting double teamed as Nori comes back out of the top pond. Needs to be careful here. There's also a lot of inbound Zui artillery fire from all of this T1 spam that's turned up belonging to Nori. Swizak wisely backing away from this conflict as he dips into the red. He's still got his head above water and there's still more inbound artillery shells. He needs to keep microing and dodging as best he can. 1,500 hit points left on the clock there. Foley now all by his lonesome on the causeway in the center. 2v1 has got a little bit of backup in the form of this inbound T1 spam from Swizak. But... Will it be enough? I think we might be looking at a win on the ground, at least in the early game here for Team 1 as they force Foley back into the bottom pond. There's a lot of inbound spam now, at least 2-1 to one advantage from the uh, spam perspective in favour of Nori and Team 1. And indeed, the uh, emergence of a T1 point defence back here to try and stem the tide of this forward pressure definitely indicates such a defensive posture is developing from team two swizak away from the hang on a minute how did he manage that you telling me you can scale that you can i always thought the cliff edge extended a little bit further but he manages to find a path up on the coastline there and is now in full retreat back to his main base still looking pretty peaky on around 2200 hp and with that little reprieve, that little breather that Team 1 have managed to negotiate for themselves, Nori taking the opportunity to get a T2 upgrade. That, of course, will allow him to throw down some defences, try and lock down the centre of the map, and importantly as well, restore a big old chunk of HP onto his commander to make his position a little bit more tenable going forward. Foley's also looking peaky. He's down to around 2,700 hit points. Needs to be careful, needs to continue to micro the slow-moving inbound artillery fire. Doesn't want to get caught out by any clumps of artillery shells that can end your party real quick, especially with that tinfoil Cybrin ACU chassis that he's sporting today. Up turns Protect with a frigate. Taking some pot shots at... Uh, Foley's commander there and some of the inbound forces from Swizak as well. Swizak move back to. So he's going to get a T2 upgrade as well. Probably a sensible decision. Could have gone from Nana Repair, but generally speaking, you want the ability to build some decent fortifications if you're fighting on the causeway. So no real surprises there. Nori cancelled his upgrade. Interesting. And I think he got quite a long way through that, as far as I'm concerned. At least up to around 30 or 40%. But I'm guessing the re emergence of Nori onto the causeway and his forward momentum persuaded him to cancel that throw away the resources he'd spent on the upgrade already and just reinitiate the upgrade a little bit further back where things were safer esperanto making his way back to base but unfortunately running into some naval pressure early t1 naval units from jagged appliance who's got a sub out he's also got another frigate down here and another inbound submarine another sliver coming in from the west he's set up his first naval yards at the side island pretty standard really and there go 
the next ones. Expect to see some more popping up down here. There we go. Meta. It's all very consistent. Predicting the actions of these players becomes less impressive once you're a few hundred games down in your casting experience. Beacon class frigate turning up for Esperanto. Trying to give his com a bit of cover here. We'll probably finish off that uh, Cybrin frigate. Can't do anything about the sub, however. Torpedo bomber could definitely take care of that, assuming it can hold control of the local skies. Let's check out the eco situation. We have a 6k advantage in total mass accrued in favour of Team 1. And 3 of that K comes from more efficient reclaim, picking up the wrecks and what have you. The other 3 from other means generated eco, although they are... No, they're actually behind by quite some margin. I need to get a new prescription for my glasses. I read that at 239 initially, but it's not. 339 slash 340 mass versus 287. That's not an insignificant difference for 10 minutes in. Well done them. Can they keep it up? That's the question. New battle lines being drawn now in the center between Nori and Swizak and Foley, who's actually kept his commander in the area, sensing perhaps that Swizak will need the extra backup. We have some Tech 2 defensive emplacements already on the ground for Nori, who completed that T2 engineering suite on the commander. And he's also got himself some tactical missile defense as well, making sure there are no TAC missile surprises or indeed early cruiser problems coming in from either side from the ponds. Speaking of the ponds, though, Foley pushing back against Protect. Foley, of course, as we've said, 2,500 rated player versus a 2,100. I know the margins are tight when you're up at this pro level, but it still can make a difference. 400 ranking points is not to be sniffed at, at whatever range you're talking about, whatever skill level. And uh, what's interesting about this as well, the cliffs usually has a higher mass access, access to resources than the beach situation. And since these are mirrored positions on both sides of the map, more often than not, you would expect the cliff players to win out against the beach players. So often you see top pond go to team two and bottom pond go to team one. However, Protect, obviously, as we've mentioned, one of the lower rated players on team one facing off against team two star at 2500 could potentially lead to an awkward situation if team two can manage to grab both ponds that's what they'll be aiming for and they've certainly making good strides for it in the bottom pond so far Look at the sheer amount of t1 naval pressure on the field from foley Hitting out at these frigates. That is priority target zone. We can push these vessels back and start taking out these naval yards and shut Protect out of the naval game. Get himself an early win in the pond, in the bottom pond for his team. How does the top pond look so far? Esperanto on an upgrade in his base. Direction of travel seems to be favouring Jagged Appliance in the top pond. <laughs> One self submarine getting himself caught around the shipyards there and getting himself reclaimed by all the engineers. Probably took down a handful, but ultimately only went to serve as fodder for their coffers. few Cybran frigates being shooed away now by Protect Navy. Let's just have a look at uh, how many frigates we have on the field for Foley and Team 2. We're looking at 16. Protect 
by contrast, has some 10. Does have four submarines to add into that mix. We're not seeing much in the way of sub power out from Foley, however. So we approach 15 minutes into the game. Foley still with his commander at the causeway. However, it looks like he might be withdrawing it now. Bringing it further back now that Swizak has a forward position, a forward outpost established. Shield coverage up and running and is now walling off the territory directly in front of him. No aspirations to try and punch his way through. Nori also dropping back with his commander. Now we're going to have some kind of no man's land developing. It's nigh on impossible to hold the centre for any significant period of time unless you're really throwing everything into it properly shielding it up sticking artillery in there and that's a major do or die commitment so you rarely see causeway players commit that heavily most uh, causeway players especially at high level will fight over the scraps in the center except that they're not going to hold the central mexes at least for the long term and instead drop back and then dip their toes into the naval game and assist in one pond or the other from the cliff edges. Yet to see either of the causeway players make that move, however. Nori saying drop. What is he saying drop to, I wonder? T3 upgrade for Terrarii completed. Also got himself a RAS upgrade on board that com. Nice little cornering of the frigates from Foley, but he still needs a counter to these submarines. Torpedo bombers should do it as those cormorants fly in overhead. There's the aerial response from Protect, who has upgraded to T3s, so has air superiority fighters in play. The response from Asimodius, air player for Team 2, inbound now to try and shoot these puppies down. Will uh, Foley be allowed to keep any of the cormorants, though? One so far, and that's a fresh one. So... Some damage dealt on both sides. Another fresh group of subs with a couple of frigates over to the east. But Protect fending off Foley in the early game. Holding steady for the time being. Let's do a quick vessel count in the top pond for both sides. Jack Appliance seems to have amassed a significant frigate fleet now of 62 vessels on the surface of the water. Do we have any frigates? There's another heavy above surface fleet. And what are we looking at? Who's handling things? There, it's Esperanto, isn't it? So 60 odd versus 27 frigates for Esperanto. That is a horrendous deficit. And check out this naughtiness. Swizak sneakily getting a drop. Maybe that was the drop that they were talking about. Taking a long time to deal with it, if uh, if it is. Just having a look. Drop. Wish they'd stop chatting and resetting the thing from uh, Nori. So maybe that's what he was trying to warn about. Managed to get two and a half land factories up and running, but then come the reinforcements in the way of a whole bunch of labs. And a stinger. So, fun as that little drop was, didn't accomplish a great deal. It's going to be very tough to catch any of these seasoned Settons players napping with drops like that when you're approaching 20 minutes in. Little drops like we saw at the beginning, landing at the top of the screen, stand a good chance of being successful, but this is the sort of outcome you would expect. I often see drops making a little bit more of a successful run by landing in here sometimes. That's quite the commitment 
also helps if uh, your air player has recently won a decent air engagement and given you some advantage on that front. Now Jagged Appliance sailing in with his vessels. Nice formation there for Esperanto, but it's probably not going to hold if Jagged comes in with everything he's got. He's actually split his fleet. There's a second group of vessels which are coming in further north and going straight after the shipyards. Stingers out from Terrarii redeploying. Trying to engage some of these frigates and prevent them from dishing out maximum damage. Engineers hurriedly working on torpedo launchers right on the coastline to the east. Frigates recognizing the danger sail straight in and start massacring the build capacity to prevent any more of those torpedo launchers from going online. There was Nori's assistance. Further back than you often see actually. You often get uh, a comm dropping to the cliff edge and doing a distance build right at the edge down here. Instead, a little bit further back, almost infringing on Esperanto's build area, if you will. Three shipyards down at the top of the screen. And now the T2 Naval HQ under threat and about to go down. That is a casualty for Team 1 to be concerned about. Serious investment. Nice group of T2 point defense on the beach. Killing off a lot of these frigates. After that little raid, though, the build power for Esperanto and Team 1 in that top pond significantly reduced. Checking back in on the bottom pond. Big old air battle taking place over the top of Protect surface fleet ASF numbers seem relatively evenly matched might just be going to Rarier's way or maybe not oh, there's inbound reinforcements from coming from both sides yeah to Rarier actually not coming out on top in that little engagement Instead, withdrawing, in fact, both sets of planes withdrawing, no sense in hanging about above the vessels, taking unnecessary anti-aircraft fire. Destroyers out on both teams in this bottom pond now. Ooh, those Salem's taking a lot of fire. Foley losing three destroyers in that encounter. Three more, though, to the southwest. Scratch that, make that four. Uh, can protect, continue to sustain these casualties. Has reinforcements coming in from the east. Little midpoint reinforcement factories. Probably unlikely to survive for Foley. Protect doing... Very well against what I was concerned about earlier. The gulf in skill, potentially. Esperanto up against it slightly, but this will help a bit. Battleship out from Nori, who didn't waste any time, went straight for Tech 3 naval power. Now has three T3... Three? Talking nonsense. Two, Guile. There's two T3 shipyards in that top pond. And a second battleship rolling off the production line as we speak. It is now tech versus spam in the top pond. Back to the bottom pond. Asmodeus trying to capitalize on that recent air engagement which sort of went his way slightly more favorable. directly in the middle pretty much of this bottom pond so not really any kind of geographical advantage 
terms of reinforcement benefit for either side. Torpedo bombers circling overhead now that Asmodeus is holding the skies over this fleet. And that will provide much needed assistance to Foley's fleet as they expand back out. Having just lost though those three T1 naval factories in the center. Protect now trying to play the same game. But this position looking precarious now. Slaughter of engineers. Always fun to watch. Civvies with no combat training. There go the two T1 shipyards for Protect. So neither player able to set up shop in the center of that bottom pond. Causeway, very little development. All sections went up as planned. Fire bases, lightly developed. Not an awful lot of firepower sitting beneath those shields. Swizak at least has his comm a little further forward, closer to the center. But now we're seeing battleships out from Jagged. It's not plain spam anymore from him. He's gone for T3 air. T3 air? He's gone for T3 navy. Talking nonsense. Battleships moving inbound on Nori's battleships. Nori now sporting five battleships in this locale. Only two present for Jagged. Protect unhappy about something. Why? Because his back is a little bit against the wall. This combined air pressure from Asmodeus and naval pressure from Foley. Got one Neptune there, but that's what the torpedo bombers are going after. High value target now drifting towards the sea bottom. Definitely wasn't happy about it though. And look at that, he is bowing out. Got crushed, GG, handing everything over to Terrarii. Come on the cliff edge there. Still building some Sams because why not? Now what can Terrarii do with the extra mass? He's now rocking with two bases. He's bringing in 968 mass per tick. Next highest income is Jagged Appliance. Over here on about 500. Can Asmodeus keep up in the air game now that Terrarii has such an extra bonus income? Quantum Gateway up. Support commanders being brought in and unsurprisingly RAS preset for extra resource production. Standard play there unless you're Going for some other specific strategy that needs more combat capable support commanders. Top bombers now reach the naval yards of what was Protect's base, now belonging to Terrarii, of course. T3 Naval HQ taking a battering, does manage to get a Neptune off before it goes pop, but the Neptune took so much damage in the dockyard that's now going to get eviscerated. Most immediately. Protect very unhappy about something in local chat. It's a family show, just don't read the chat. Destroyers from Foley shutting down Team One's 
naval position in this bottom pond. And like we said before, this is bad because uh, cliffs should have that advantage in the bottom pond. So we could be looking at a situation here if Jagged can use his position to win out. Although that is not a given. Things not looking brilliant on the naval side in the top pond for Team 2. We've got multiple battleships from two different players. We've got Aeon and Seraphim BS in the house for Team 1 versus a handful of galaxies. I mean, quite a few though. He's doing pretty well. Jagged Appliance now pulling in 522. Esperanto putting in 4750. And Nori putting in 482. And that is where all of their efforts are going, pretty much into that top pond. They're not doing much of anything else. Oh, well, I suppose he did build a T3 naval yard as well, and one battleship. And that's about to get annihilated in that uh, bottom pond. But otherwise, everything is being ploughed into this top pond. So it's pretty vital, really, for Team 1 that they win this pond now. They have lost the bottom pond. They will lose the side island. They've pretty much already lost it. Just a couple of redundant uh, cut-off T3 mexes, which will soon be taken care of, I have no doubt. That's a lot of ASF numbers. Let's just do a quick ASF count now to see where our two air players are at. 257 air superiority fighters on the field for Terrarii on Team 1. Lord Asmodeus has 337. So, no question as to where the advantage lies. It's with Team 2 and Asmodeus. And if he can win an air encounter, he might be able to do something special with this experimental bomber, which is nearly finished. Closing in on that 52,000 HP completion factor in the bottom left-hand corner. You can see the counters ticking up. For those of you that are new, and if you are new, well done on getting 30 minutes into a game, which must just seem like the most complicated and impenetrable game. If you think that, you should play Dwarf Fortress. Less explosions. More crazy 2D menus is an impenetrable game that one lots of inbound fire from the destroyers and the battleships around here there's some counter fire coming out from a lovely little clink hammer battery around this soon to be destroyed fusion reactor didn't take the artillery pieces with it in its volatile explosion thanks to some quick reclaiming actions from the local support commander in situ a lot of battleships and in fact Nori has been gifted over the battleships that were produced by Esperanto Jagged almost pushed right the way back to his cliff edge base now Experimental bomber, that's what I was looking for. Flying through the sea of aircraft, which are there to protect it. We've got some two sets actually, two air wings, if you will, from Terrarii just shadowing this position. Nice bomb there, taking care of large swathes of lower tier tech units on Team 1. Kill NGs, then the power, says Protect. Who is he talking to is the question. Floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty. Coming off the causeway from Nori. Trying to tie up some of these vessels which are now lobbing their ordnance in towards Nori's causeway base. 
Are some outbound artillery emplacements firing back. It's a lot of firepower. Oh no! Enormous experimental bomber coming in over the top and unleashing its bomber, taking out what was a very sturdy looking battery on the coastline. Terrarii recognizing this death ball for what it is and not wanting to get involved in a fight just yet. He probably thinks it's relatively even. It might even be relatively even now. But uh, if you end up throwing away your fighters at the same time as you're killing theirs, if you haven't engaged the bomber, the bomber gets away scot-free, then you've still got the same problem. It's a problem that's wrecking your teammate's base, killing off shields and allowing the inbound artillery from the off-the-coast battleships to massacre the infrastructure. We do have a Tsar from Esperanto. Needs to be careful with it, though. Very slow and vulnerable, more so than the experimental bomber. How's Asmodeus going to handle this? I think that's a bad engage for Asmodeus. He moved his aircraft up, was tentative, didn't want to go after the Tsar because he thought that that would tie up his aircraft's targeting and allow Terrarii to get the drop on him. And so instead he just stalled and that allowed Terrarii to get the drop on him. And now that's a massive air win for Team 1. And not only that, the experimental bombers been shot down to Rorii with I'm guessing that's a troll I'm guessing that's sarcasm in local chat about Asmodeus's play there rather than complimenting his own with his own bravado but I guess slamming someone else's play is a form of bravado and that really does change the dynamic somewhat can they now make use of this czar and thin out this fleet just a little bit. Inbound fighters from Asmodeus trying to get lucky and get an, a vector on the Tsar but cut off immediately and having to tuck tail and run. Terrarii with some 353 planes remaining at a mass value there of 124,000 essentially. 124,000 mass just on Air superiority fighters. That's outrageous. Don't build here, please. <laughs> That's where he wants to expand to. Little mass fab farms going up all over for Nori. Inarguably territory that belongs detected. to Esperanto, but I'm sure it's all being cordially done. Yolana Os. Yolana Os under construction although not being prioritized they're working on more power generation to begin with but i imagine once they've completed those they will work on it but a regular nuke out from jagged appliance where's it headed across the causeway looks like it's going to protect old base certainly a vulnerable point but not necessarily one that's going to cause a huge amount of problems maybe he's concerned about this ridiculous click hammer battery that's going up over here We'll certainly deal with it and all of the T1 factories that aren't doing anything at the moment will grab a couple of mechs kills further to the south as well but hey if you've got it use it why not Jack Appliance scoring some kills there with his nuke launcher Tsar has taken a little bit of damage into the yellow 27 and 28 thousand hit points remaining and now look at this, with that air win, Terrarii able to mass produce torpedo bombers and go after some of these high value targets belonging to Jagged Appliance in the top pond. These galaxies taking a battering. Yowzers. This is a problem, can Asmodeus bring anything to the fight? He's got a new air wing developing down here but he's still well off the pace a long way away from air parity 
So why is that getting an air upgrade, a RAS upgrade on his comm and then going straight for advanced RAS once he completes it. Foley a stone throw away with his commander. But despite that air win for Asmodeus, things haven't changed in the bottom pond. I think they've sort of just written off this bottom pond. And instead they're trying to hold back Jagged. Little bit of a uh, a tool order squashing both of these salts simultaneously. At least Esperanto and Nori have a naval presence in this top pond. So if they kill off the majority of these targets belonging to Jagged, they can re-expand. So, very nearly dead, coming in over the top of Swizak's territory. Eventually gets shot down, despite the huge escort it was being given by Terrarii. Not sure it did anything of any real importance. A little bit of chat there. Sad story of microing. Wasn't happy with the, the way he played that, I think. small group of destroyers was sent up here and managed to kill off the not just the three mexes but the little t2 mass fab farms that spring up around mexes these days so nice little mass sniping operation it was a suicide mission but uh, useful for their cause nonetheless spiky space socialists are used to suicide missions it's very much their thing Eugene. I, I've said it before in previous casts, I'm much more of a fan of this tempered naming mod that doesn't litter my screen with ridiculous text of naming every single unit. Instead, having some detected. special units into the mix. Much prefer that. Now, where's that latest nuke out from? My screen is just full of stuff right now. Identifying things is difficult. It's not coming out of Jagged. It's coming out of some either battleship or submarine down here. Coming out from Foley, I would imagine. Going after Esperanto or Nori's resourcing operation. It's Esperanto. Going to tear a hole in a few PGENs. And he's actually close on the breadline of power consumption with 190 odd net power. That's not great. Team 2 can bag a few more reactors. That will slow them down somewhat. Let's talk about Eco, because we haven't done that for a long time. 1.6k to 1.5k in favour of Team 1. Not an awful lot in it, but it's still a small advantage for Team 1. Team 1, though, who are just slightly behind by some 20,000 mass overall. Again, tiny margin for 40 minutes into this game more balanced than it looks what with team 2 completely dominating the bottom pond and they've now invaded the cliff edge Foley setting up cyber in factories in what was Protect's old base remnants of Protect's forces gifted over to Terrarii have backed up over here a couple of support commanders holding the fort down with some T2 point defence Another nuke out from Jagged Appliance. Where's that going? Looks like it's going after Esperanto once again. We've actually had three Novak satellites spring up in the main base for Terrarii and a Mavor, which is some 40% complete. The nuke connects, kills off a bunch of boats, and importantly, has killed off the naval yards down here. For Nori, one of which of course was that T3HQ. So that will reduce Nori's ability to produce stuff, but really, Nori's main base has been overrun by the presence of Navy down here in the harbour area. And just look at this expansion from Foley. He is everywhere. He's invading Team One's causeway section. He's invaded the cliffs.
jagged despite the air problems is still very much alive and in fact getting an awful lot of assistance now from Swizak who has produced redonkulous numbers of aircraft carriers with a few battleships thrown into the mix. Aircraft carriers of course with crazy anti-air capabilities makes life very difficult to counter as an air player. Huge numbers of torpedo bombers for Esperanto being brought to bear now in this top pond. Trying to take the pressure off this line of Omen class battleships that he's arrayed outside of his port. Fighter screen coming in first of all for Terrarii. Shooting down some of the hostile torpedo bombers. Now Esperanto presumably going after either the battleships or the aircraft carriers. Aircraft carrier fire will cut these to ribbons, but they might bag a battleship or two. See, they've taken one of the galaxy classes down quite a bit. And then forced to back off once again. Oh no! <laughs> Quick transfer of control kills all of their movement and leaves them temporarily sitting ducks for the inbound anti-aircraft fire. Not ideal. Those Novak satellites we mentioned earlier from Terraria have been dispatched over here for Asmodeus, who has completed a Yolana Os and is currently charging, I think, his first missile. I haven't heard any others go off. I know I didn't fare so well in a recent cast and I missed a couple of nukes here and there. Apologies for that, but it happens. Tis the way of things, my good friends. And that first missile nearly primed and ready for launch. Base heavily shielded. Novak Satellite's going to have a hard time chewing through that, but the Mavor will help. Its mighty penis of doom now training its eyes on the hottest target in the room. That would be Asmodeus with his blonde hair and his high heels. That's where the analogy should end, I think. <laughs> And Strategic bosh. Detected. could watch that all day. A nuke out. Who from? It's from somewhere. I don't know where from. Is it out from Jagged? Oh, no, of course. <laughs> we just talked about it. My memory is shocking. Don't get old, guys. It's not worth it. So that Yolana Os missile inbound. I would imagine there's a decent amount of strategic missile defense. We've got one there. Lots of rover drones assisting it. Two missiles loaded in the clip. Another one going up over there. Two more up here. So Terrarii relatively well covered but will be primary target because of the Mavor. What was that that went pop? I think it might have been a support commander. Yep. Strategic launch detected. Takes three to shoot that one down. Only needed two, of course. Second nuke out from the Yolana Os, but wow! Look at what the Mavor's done! It only got to shoot two nukes out before getting killed off. And now Asmodeus getting locked onto by the Novax. This is a turn up for the books. Shields blink back on. But Asmodeus. Down to 6,800 hit points of his 15,000 base HP. Foley shouting, kill him. Nori low on health, also right at the top of the screen. I'm going to go to split screen to keep an eye on these two areas as best I can. It's not easy. Asmodeus at the fringe of the top shield, which I think is probably the, has the most health attached to it. Mavor shell still continuing to rain down on that base. Oh no, shield capitulation. Lord Asmodeus <gasps> losing health. Boom! And our first ejection at 46 minutes and it's the air player on team two. Mavor shells still raining down and Novak satellite still overhead. Possibly causing problems. In comes some strap bombers at the same time. Nori. <gasps> Down to 200 hit points, but there's one more. Boom! Look at that. Who was it? It was Jagged Appliance in with the strap bombers. 
So when they fall, they all fall at once. It's now a 3v3. Esperanto moving his commander out from the beach. And I'm not surprised. Look at the sheer amount of firepower off his coastline there. And he's taking some battleship fire to the back of his head. If anything, can he do about it? And that must be frustrating. He's inherited all of Nori's old stuff. But with a fleet of this magnitude sitting in the bay, everything in this area is about to get killed off. We've also got redonkulous quantities of T1 spam now being produced by both Zwizak and by Foley. And that is all inbound. And would you just look at the sphere of influence that Team 1 are left with this I would imagine will fall soon and you'll be sitting on that saving graces for team one to Rari his air power which is extensive let's not forget it the three Novak satellites and the Mavor Mavor with its enormous punching power but it does suffer because it's concentrated and he's trying to deal with this. An array of infrastructure across a very wide area. He has to pick apart important areas one by one. Weak point found here, evidently. Foley losing reactors and air factories. And some air staging beacons. Nice to see logistics being thought about. Don't always see that. And a control K out from Protect, who uh, has had enough. He wasn't really adding much to anything. Bit of comm bomb in a friendly area, but I think they've modified it enough these days that it literally does nothing. Look, it, it tickles away at the friendly infrastructure. Perhaps not ideal from a role place perspective. How do you get this nuke to distinguish its blast radius? <laughs> Friend from foe. But they've managed it somehow. Ours is not to question why. Ours is but to cast and die. And I'm well on the way to that. What have we got now in terms of defence? Oh, large wave of strap bombers inbound from Foley. They're revenants. They've got stealth activated, but they've been spotted nonetheless. Air superiority fighters from Terrarii doing a wonderful job shooting almost all of them down, leaving only one remaining to deploy its payload. Surprisingly enough, not a single Sam in this area to help shoot this bad boy down. I guess he felt like he hasn't needed it because of the sheer quantity of air units he's been sporting throughout this. Air engagement off over here between Esperanto and Foley. Foley with a larger number of ASFs remaining. Esperanto forced to bug out with these torpedo bombers, although he's left some of them around to just get slaughtered. Not intentionally, I don't think. Novak satellites redeploying, having inflicted all sorts of casualties Strategic down here. Foley's base has seen better days. What are we talking about here? So they've spotted ACUs. Another nuke out as well over here. So two ACUs. They spotted both Foley and... And Swizak, they said Foley was too deep. Swizak, I don't think is too deep. And they're suggesting ground fire with the Mavor. It's one inbound. Swizak is in the shallows. Eats one shell down to 9,000 hit points. Now gets on the move. The next shell will be inbound. He won't have a lot of time. There it is. Could do with a transport to get out of there. That one was a little bit wayward. This one looks bang on. Oh, no, just dropped short. Still 12,000 hit points on the comm. Oh, no. That is a wonderful play by Terrarii, who bags his second comm kill with his combination of Mavor. Oh, and a kill down here at the bottom. 
out from Terrarii from some solid strat bombers. So he's busy killing Swizak with the Mavor. And then he dispatched a bunch of T3 torp bombers. Had some T2s ready as well to kill off Foley. And suddenly it's a 1v2. Jagged Appliance now in control of all of these units and all of this territory. Trying to finish off Esperanto and Terrarii who are in the back of Terrarii's base. This is a fascinating game. All Jagged Appliance has to do is hold on. If he can hold on, he should close this out. Huge numbers of Notha fighter bombers coming out of these aircraft carriers. Just flying through the ASF coverage though. They're going to get cut to absolute ribbons. A couple of revenants inbound as well. One again, just one makes it through to unleash its payload before getting shot down. Shield coverage defending adequately against it. Jagged Appliance com underneath. Esperanto's ASFs. Do they know where he is? These ones are out of fuel, so that's why they're moving slowly. Esperanto getting pinged. Satellite flying overhead. Does that give a sonar? I can't remember. There's the signature. Flying overhead. Will they recognize it though? And if they can, can they get some torpedo bombers to it? Certainly looks like it. Esperanto pinging it. Suggesting that might be the commander. That's about as good a guess as you're likely to see. In come the spy planes from Terraria. He's going to lose a lot of them flying over that fleet. Just to try and discover the whereabouts. <laughs> Jagged Appliance. Aware of the danger starts work on a stealth upgrade. It's not going to help against the Omni on board the spy planes. They've discovered his location. That is the view from Team 1. So they know where he is now. Stealth completed, however. So he can get lost pretty easily. As long as he can keep the spy planes off his back. The longer this goes on the less room Team 1 have to operate on. This is some clutch business right here, I'm telling you. Esperanto getting an upgrade. Not sure exactly what. I haven't got time to think about it, to be honest. Lots of nuke subs sitting off the coast. Spread carriers to here, says Asmodeus. Jagged Appliance says they're stuck on each other. It is a little bit of a traffic jam in that bay. Look at this. Forward air production yards now under fire from naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie. Our confused destroyers who've sprout their legs and gone for a wander. There's a ton of Zooies in here and some Yenzines as well. At the moment, they're just kind of drifting towards this point defense array. Ah, uh, but what have we got here? Torp bombers brought in from the north. Two batches of them. Does Jack and Appliance ha even have an air force anymore? I'm not sure he does. Air production facilities in multiple locations were targeted by those Novak satellites and by the Mavor. He does have the... Strategic launch detected. Aircraft carriers, but they've been producing tons of Notha fighter bombers, which are still being sent in towards the main base. I think this next batch is going to fare about as well as the last one did. In come the torpedo bombers, though, from Terrarii, going after the comm. That's what they can see. They're well aware of the comm's location, but they've been obliterated on their way to the target. There's just too much naval presence with anti-air capabilities Strategic down here detected. and a few SAM sites as well. Right above that commander. Oh, needs to be so careful that Mavor still operational. We've seen what it can do. Jagged Appliance absorbing more torpedo damage. He's in the shallows. One Mavor shell will kill him off here. There's another one inbound. Jagged Appliance trying to airlift the comm out. It drops short. Now it's risky. He's on board. If it gets hit by a Mavor shell, that's it. 
If he gets shot down, that's it. There were T3 torque bombers inbound that would have finished him off. But he's away from the danger. They're Strategic tracking detected. the transport. Trying to keep the scrying tool on it. To keep the intel relevant. They know where it's going. They imagine it's headed down here. There are the pings. ASF's being dispatched to try and shoot it down. They'll never get there in time. I imagine he's probably about ready to offload. Doesn't want to do it too shallow. We've seen what the Mavor can do to him. Not many air superiority fighters left, but it won't take many to shoot it down. But they're already too late. Jagged Appliance underwater. 7,400 HP. Starts work on some Myrmidons. Then presumably thinks, maybe I've got away with it stealth-wise. I don't want to give away my position. Now starting work on a cloak upgrade. But the main base of Team 1 running out of time. T1 spam. T2 destroyers reaching the outskirts of the base. We've got strap bombers lurking overhead. The shields have capitulated. Bosh! Down goes Terrarii. And a stone's throw away is Esperanto. Surely he's going to go down as well. Tons of strats still lurking for Jagged Appliance. And that will wrap it up. What an ending. Wow. Just wow. They were so, so close. Torpedo bombers moving out en masse for Esperanto to try and kill off Jagged Appliance underwater. It wouldn't have taken many of them. 8,700 hit points. He was rooted to the spot on an upgrade. Uh, yeah. Would he have got through? He, there's... A huge bank of T1 tracers here. That would have shot down a significant number. Flying overhead, a couple of aircraft carriers. I think he probably would have ended up with maybe a third of this pile left. One dist uh, cruiser there, sorry, with decent anti-air capabilities. That will take down one or two. Another one there. I reckon... Jagged Appliance probably had about 20 to 30 seconds left to live, maybe. If they'd have made it through with a third of those bombers, which I think they probably could have. Look at them. They're all mostly in the green. There are some back here in the yellow, but the lead ones down here, or rather in the center, they're all in the green. They'll have been able to take some fire. Wow. What a clutch ending. What an insane game. And I think the perfect game to round off our 100th epic here on the channel. Please do smash that like button if you found that entertaining. I don't see any reason why the likes shouldn't match the number of views. Unless you're insane. I mean, apart from all you crazy people who've just turned off. <laughs> apart from seeing it immediately and going, what is this? I don't understand what's going on. But if you did like it, guys, please do like. Hit the subscribe button. Comment for the algorithm. And check out the Patreon, which is a mere dollar a month and is full of lots of extra goodness, which you only are going to get access to through the Patreon. It's at $1, and there are 76 casts. We've just had another fantastic epic that went up yesterday. And it'll also give you access to the Discord as well, guys. So please do check that out. Hope you're well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.